Okay, good afternoon, or good evening, or even good morning, wherever you may be in the globe. Greetings to everyone. My name is Reverend George Ogunrie. I'm the coordinator of uh, Inter-Religious Association for Peace and Development in Africa. And uh, I will be the moderator for the fourth session of this Inter-Religious Association of, of this International uh, Leadership Conference. 2020. Thank you all for joining and participating in this session. Uh, we have lined up here some very uh, distinguished speakers to uh, share thoughts with us on the theme uh, of, this, of this session, which is the spirit of cooperation, the way towards peace. Uh, from the overall theme of this uh, uh, inter International Leadership Conference, which is the uh, post-COVID-19 world opportunities, challenges and opportunities. Once again, you are all welcome. Uh, the opening remarks will be given by uh, Dr. Tajel Din Hamad, who is the Vice President and Director of Office of UN Relations, Universal Peace Federation uh, in New York. Um, other distinguished participants in this session will be uh, Dr. Prophet uh, Samuel Radebe, the founder of the Revelation Church of God in South Africa, with branches in many different countries in Southern Africa. Uh, we also have Mrs. Ruhab Mehdi, who is the chairperson of the International Iman Hussein Council in the United Kingdom. Uh, Sheikh Sufi Bilad Diallo is supposed to join us, but uh, he's unable to join us due to uh, very pressing assignments that he has at this time in Mali. As you know, there's uh, some issues, uh, political issues in Mali, and uh, uh, any leader what is sold is really involved in handling that crisis, and uh, Cheikh Diallo is one of them. So due to exigencies of duty, he's not able to come. But he will be represented by uh, uh, Abu Bakar Sao, uh, who is a youth leader in his organization that runs uh, a huge blog um, around the world. Uh, we also have uh, Rabbi Kevin Dekali of the Center for Interreligious Studies and the Interfaith Dialogue in Switzerland. So these are very, very distinguished speakers to uh, handle the topic today of the spirit of cooperation, the way towards peace. Uh, each speaker will speak for seven minutes. Uh, uh, we, we, we hope that uh, you will all keep it to that, seven or eight minutes. And uh, then there, we'll have some time for some question and answers, which will be handled by uh, Mr. Hena Hashman, and uh, then each speaker will have maybe one minute to recap and uh, mention some points that were not mentioned in, this, in the first presentations. Once again, I welcome all the speakers and I welcome all uh, participants and listeners in this session. Uh, without much ado, let me invite Dr. Tajeldin Hamad to give his opening remarks. Dr. Hamad, please. Thank you, Brother George. Peace, shalom, assalamu alaikum. Special appreciation and greetings to the distinguished speakers. I pray and hope your family are healthy and safe in this challenging time. Our heart goes out to those who are suffering 
as a result of COVID-19 crisis and other global calamities. We remember today those who lost their lives on September 11 because of terrorism. Father and Mother Moon founded many organizations to contribute for the establishment of world peace from the individual level to the worldwide level. Building on decades of interreligious conferences and dialogues held worldwide and several of the and several of their organizations. Mother Moon founded as a project of UPF, the Interreligious Association for Peace and Development. IAPD was inaugurated in Korea on November 13, 2017. In 2018, inaugural conventions were held on six continents around the world. Over 23,000 religious leaders participated in IAPD events held in 93 nations. IAPD assembled global religious leaders and tapped into the profound wisdom found in humanity's spiritual heritage. Religious leaders and faith-based organizations provide the moral compass to deal with social problems in contemporary societies, racism and exploitations, crime, hunger, terrorism, the environment, and more. IAPD harness, harnesses the goodwill and wisdom of the religions who are called to play a unique and essential role in bringing about a world of lasting peace, a world in which people of all nationalities, ethnicities, races, cultures, and worldwide views are called to live together in mutual respect, harmony, and cooperation. A world that the founders of UPF now call Heavenly Parents Holy Community. Peace is a hope for all ages, but it seems to be so distant even now. Peace is a magical word. Peace is emotional. It is like love. You have to live for the sake of others. Of course, peace should start with me by living for the sake of others in my family, community, society, nation, and ultimately the world. On the other hand, religion has an important role to play in promoting and contributing to peace and human development. The great religions have been the foundation of ethics, culture, and civilization throughout the ages. Although interreligious and intra conflicts are prevalent in the world, we cannot fail to acknowledge the great contributions of religion and at the same time repent for the mistakes and damages done in the name of religion. Interreligious dialogue is important, but even more important is to move beyond dialogue to working together. Religious leaders need to work in partnership with each other and with government and all stakeholders. They are collaborators, not competitors. The other is not the enemy. The enemy now is COVID-19, which divide the world, separated people, and created insecurities, fear, and loneliness. IAPD is needed at this time to bring oneness, compassion, comfort, and security. While nations are individually racing to find the vaccine for COVID-19, IAPD could help nations to race towards unity, togetherness, and love the ultimate vaccine for all ills. It must be emphasized that by connecting and working together, we can overcome this crisis of COVID-19 and rightfully any other crisis we may face in the future. The combined contributions of all religions will once again make religion relevant 
in the daily affairs of humankind. The wisdom of all religion is needed in all multilateral institutions, especially at the United Nations, where God, the origin of peace, is rarely mentioned or called to help create the peace that the UN was originally created to achieve. Such is a good opportunity for IAPD to work in partnership with the United Nations. After all, the role of religious leader is to be peace builder, peacemaker, and peace giver. Moreover, for this partnership to succeed, women and youth must be included as very important partners. My friend Ambassador Chowdhury from UN, the former UN Assistant Secretary General said, there is no peace without development and there is no development without peace. But most important, there is no peace or development without women and youth. A wise man once said, alone I can say, but together we can talk. Alone I can enjoy, but together we can celebrate. Alone I can smile, but together we can laugh. Let us talk, celebrate, and laugh while building peace and developing loving relationships. We applaud Mother Moon for her loving, embracing heart. And fondly, we remember Father Moon, who still lives in our hearts. I wish UPF a very happy, productive, and meaningful 15th anniversary. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Dr. Hamad. Thank you for those very important things you have reminded us about. The religion is the source of all of our morality. Without religion, there is no development. Without, without development, no religion. This is a really very important point. And uh, we have opened the floor for the distinguished participants to deliberate on this subject of uh, the spirit of cooperation. Uh, I will uh, request all participants to pay attention that there is a button on interpretation on the, on the bottom bar. Um, so those of, those of us that need interpretation, please go on that bottom bar and you will see interpretation. Click on it and select your language uh, because our speakers will be speaking uh, in various languages and uh, you, may need, you may need translation. Translation is available. Our first speaker for this session will be Prophet Samuel, uh, we, Dr. Wizi Leswe Radebe an African indigenous spiritual leader who holds a doctorate in theology and doctorate in African medicine, healing, and facilitation. He is the founder and leader of the Revelation Church of God in South Africa. The church operates more than 60 branches throughout the continent, with seven branches located in Zimbabwe, Mozambique, and Malawi. He is the author of various articles and books on spirituality and is a prominent businessman as well. Let us invite Prophet Radebe. Thank you, Program Director, for the illustrious introduction. Esteemed Mother of Peace, Dr. Ha Chang Han Moon, Honorable members of the Universal Peace Federation, distinguished guests, country leaders and country representatives, friends, all protocol observed. I begin my congratulating the Universal Peace Federation organizers for the precision employed in organizing this well-oiled international leadership conference 
webinar. Equally, I am also humbled by the opportunity I am offered to address this August gathering on the theme entitled, The Spirit of Cooperation, The Way Towards Peace. I felt privileged when I received the invitation. At the same time, my mind went into focus mode as to what it is, I would say, that would stimulate results-orientated ideas, apart from what will be shared and that which has already been shared to better exude the spirit of cooperation, the way towards peace. The exemplary leadership role demonstrated by Dr. Hak Chang Han Moon, our true mother, throughout the years has been eye-opening and yet mind-boggling in all our quests to be good leaders. An unwavering fight for world peace has inspired us to work harder to better the lives of those we lead. The COVID-19 world pandemic is a paradigm shift in this era's economics. We all have been forced to sort other means outside the norm to survive, create opportunities where opportunities seem absent. This pandemic has also presented a period marked by distinctive features of true leaders from those who are only attached to the title and not the rule, the true rule. I am a prophet, an African indigenous prophet that has been mandated to restore the dignity and the distinct position of African people back to their origins. My role as a spiritual leader is to reestablish the hopes of my people through spirituality, counseling, and the instilling of tolerance and civility in order to achieve peace in their respective diverse communities. Leaders become great not because of their power, but because of their ability to empower others. Today, we are all assembled in this place to deliberate on the spirit of cooperation in order to reach the goal of world peace. In my understanding of the theme, what springs to mind is the power of acceptance. Acceptance is one of the most powerful states of mind that one can be in. Once one has accepted the reality of something, one is empowered to do something about it. As religious leaders, we need to accept that we are different in our beliefs and thus a need to strike a balance in which will allow for us to effectively work together, cooperate for the vision of world peace to materialize. We need to consider our commonalities and strengths and build on them. This will in turn infiltrate into the, into the people we lead, who will spread it to their respective communities, making our goal global and not central to the platform on which we engage on. I tell people I lead that spirituality is not religion. Spirituality is the freedom to learn from every aspect of life. The freedom to reason without the influence of the doctrines of religion, country, constitutions, etc. For instance, here in South Africa, we have a motto that we live by. It's called uh, Ubuntu, U-B-U-N-T-U. 
a phrase that is synonymous with acceptance, love, respect, humility, and tolerance. This webinar has presented us an opportunity to have a fierce focus on unity and the spirit of teamwork, an opportunity to do away with individualism. As a spiritual leader, I am fortunate enough to engage with people from all walks of life and learn a thing or two from them, thus allowing me to view life with wide lenses. Through my ability to engage with people outside of my faith, I can lead people who come from different religious backgrounds without making them feel inferior. It is indeed the role of a true leader to help people acknowledge failures and frustrations, not as a reason to doubt the prospect, prospects of success, but to provide them the reason to strengthen their resolve to win despite the difficulties. My resolve to work hard towards world peace has never been on such a high trajectory than now. This global crisis has been nothing else but an all-time motivator for me to cooperate with leaders from all sectors to achieve the goal that is world peace. I give reference to the guidance of my creator, Mfishagam, and my ancestral guides. I thank you. Thank you very much, Prophet Radebe, for that presentation and uh, giving us the consciousness of the power of uh, acceptance. And I hope uh, that uh, South African word uh, Ubuntu, uh, which you have uh, projected, uh, really uh, each one of us can take that, take that away as uh, a, a spirit of love, empathy, tolerance, and uh, acceptance and each one of us put that in our lives is really what the great religions are also projecting to us. Thank you very much, Prophet. We shall go to the next speaker. The next speaker is Mrs. Rubab Mehdi, who is a human rights barrister and interfaith activist in the UK. Uh, her, faith, her first multi-faith conference in Pakistan at the age of just 13 years, uh, was an event sponsored by the former Prime Minister of pa Pakistan, uh, Benazir Bhutto. Uh, she is also chair of the International Imam Hussein Council, a Pakistan-based charity promoting interfaith and is a fervent ad advocate for the rights of religious minorities. A, a former European spokesperson for the Pakistan Ministry of Human Rights. She runs an annual awards event in the House of Lords, recognizing the achievement of women of faith, always courageous in speaking out on sensitive issues. Ms. Rubab has played a critical role in securing a place for women in, in settings dominated by men. She was awarded as one of 21 faith leaders for the 21st century in the UK by faith-based media. Let us welcome uh, Mrs. Mehdi. Uh, I would like to congratulate uh, UPF on their 15th anniversary. And right now, uh, my message would be uh, that at a that when um, at a time when conflict has all the money and peace has none, their role as peacemakers and bridge builders is very important. And all I will say is please continue building. And um, 
because I've been uh, I, because I'll be speaking on the issue of uh, cooperation and how it can pave uh, peace uh, from a slightly religious perspective. Um, the two favorite names of God are Rahman and Rahim. So without going into a lot of detail, uh, Rahim relates to Muslim unity. When we read the translation of Rahman, however, that is the all-inclusive God who provides sustenance regardless of beliefs. In capacity of Rahman, God provides to everyone and his mercy extends to those who do not believe in him. From the word Rahman is derived the word Raham, which means the womb of a female. The unity of humanity, the virtues of inclusiveness, the spirit of cooperation stems from the woman. It is in in and through a woman that you find the nurturers. When God introduces himself at the level of a human being, he calls himself Rab, the Lord, the nurturer, the sustainer, and that is a motherly and a feminine role. God is the giver of life, sustainer of life, completion of life, and the one who brings everything to the provision and completion of its journey. And if that is to be observed and if that acquires the fullest manifestation, then it is within a woman. Such is the great and honorable position of a female within the human context. Humanity itself cries for the worth of a womb and the lap that instills humanity in otherwise animal forms, accepting women as equal stakeholders in the community. They are not objects of desire, but equals in humanity and their spirituality. And the reason, and um, I mentioned this today, is uh, the concept of Ubuntu uh, that was mentioned earlier. And one of um, the problem solving ways that you know we have to get over the systematic inequality uh, that exists whenever we see any other religion, gender, caste, or anything as lesser than ourselves or anything else as inferior, that is when uh, the problems arise. That is the root cause of violence. That is the root cause of extremism. So cooperation uh, begins when you start recognizing the genders, the religious beliefs as our equals. And the important role that can be, as we know that throughout the world, uh, women have suffered and children have suffered in, in wars, in conflicts, in, uh, they've been victims of extremism, but they've had very little say. So I think the important role uh, that uh, women can play, and as I said, uh, when it comes, the clue is in, in the very words that the word Rahman, which means the all-inclusive God, and then Raham, the womb of the female, there is clue that this part of humanity, which can be the bridge builders and um, healers of humanity, has got to be uh, recognized. And then uh, when we look at co co uh, cooperation, I think um, it's easy. We have the neighborhood uh, principle in Christianity. Uh, similarly, in um, Islam, um, um, you have the concept of Musawat um, and uh, there is a concept that you have to go to a mosque um, every single day um, and then on Friday you have to go to the uh, bigger mosque and biggest mosque and the reason for that is is neighborhood keeping an eye on the community and trying to see um, if anybody around you needs, needs your help and loving your neighbor um, as you love yourself. And then also there is this concept of zakat, which is meant to be a cooperation with the less fortunate where you are meant to pay 2.5% of, uh, of, of your savings and your earnings to the less fortunate people in the society. Um, and 
also when you look in the uh, islamic um, uh, history um, what what is important is respecting the boundaries of different countries um, not waging wars on countries respecting the boundaries of countries because there is this historical incident of the armies marching up to Syria and at that time Syria had everything that the army could have wanted and the borders were unarmed but despite that the army did not even put a step forward and the reason for that was to respect the boundary of the country. So it's about uh, again the messages uh, that are there from a historical perspective are clear and they need to be they, 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 they are a way forward uh, for peace building, for, co for cooperation today. And the spirit of harmony basically refers to harmony in diversity and harmonious coexistence. The concept of harmony underlines mutual respect, inclusiveness, mutual learning, and peaceful coexistence. Harmony is regarded as a virtue in interpersonal relations and unity as the best way to sail through tough times. When it comes to international relations, the concept of harmony um, is about multilateralism, which means that all countries, big or small, rich or poor, are all equal, while any act of big and strong bullying the small and weak is to be denounced, based on the respect for diversity and inclusiveness. International affairs should be dealt with through dialogue and consultation among all relevant parties involved. We should seek peaceful solutions to any disputes by means of such dialogue and consultation and create conditions conducive for to, to peace and development in the world in a spirit of win-win cooperation. As for the spirit of cooperation, it means trustworthiness and integrity. Always being true in words and resolute in deeds. As the traditional going, uh, saying goes, without integrity, a person cannot be a real man. A business will not prosper. And for as, of, as for the government, it will have no prestige at all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. Mehdi, for that beautiful presentation. Very inspiring, uh, especially on the role of women as bridge builders and uh, healers. And this is uh, quite uh, significant because uh, the one under whose auspices we are gathering here and um, participating in this International Leadership Conference is a mother, Mother Moon. And uh, so it's quite fitting and appropriate that uh, you bring up this point very, very vividly and very strongly. Thank you very much. Let us uh, welcome the next speaker. Uh, like I said earlier, the next speaker was supposed to be Sheikh Sufi Bital Diallo, who is the Vice President of the Islamic Council of Mali. But uh, he is unable to uh, attend due to very pressing meetings concerning the Mali situation. So therefore, uh, we have present from Mali representing the Sheikh, Abubakar Sao, uh, who, who will speak in his place. Abu Bakr Sal studied uh, in, in French Arabic and uh, has uh, undergone interfaith uh, training, even under biblical study. And uh, in Mali, he has created a huge a blog that has a huge following. Uh, and the title of his blog is No Constraint in Religion. So uh, seem that he is uh, the right person to address a topic on the spirit of cooperation, the way to peace. Let us invite Abu Bakr Saab, please. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Assalamu alaikum. Jibu Salim, please. Everyone, normally Sheikh Sufi Bilal should have been there to give his presentation, but but he has a very busy program, so he couldn't be here with, with us. Okay. 
My name is Abu Bakar Su. I am an interreligious preacher and I created the blog No Constraints in Religion, which is based on the Quran, um, verse D156, uh, something like that. No constraints in religion. And that's through those verse, verses that I chose the name of my blog. Often on Wednesdays, we uh, Fridays, we would spend time with our brothers studying Quran. I am also a member of the cultural committee of the generation on, on New Testament. And my brothers and me are looking for partnerships in order to internationalize our activities. And that's why I have regular relationships with the Universal Peace Federation in Europe uh, through Chantal Kumagata in Switzerland, Jean-François Moulinet and Victor Reynier in France, and also in Mali through Mr. Jules Dembele and the Secretary General of UPF. Last year, I was uh, really happy to be at the African summit in Niger. And during this summit, I appreciated very much the initiative of Mother Moon, which is to create the Heavenly Parents Holy Community. I really hope for the 15th anniversary of uh, the UPF that uh, it will have a bright future and I really agree and uh, support all its activities. And if we look at the UPF principles, core principles, the last one invites for um, unity, which transcends national and religious barriers. The founding of our civilization um, is religion, but in our world now, Religion is sometimes, has sometimes caused violence. People of faith should really work for uh, public interests. If uh, we are excessive in religion, it becomes fanatism and the initial hope is deformed. So, we need other virtues like hum humility and openness to other opinions. We cannot just divide but transmit the sacred and give people the, the will and the hope to, to go over prejudice, resentment, and hatred. Some leaders have shown that the power of faith is really strong. The governments can negotiate agreements to end violence. But where can we find the force to heal the wounds and um, overcome the source of the conflict? 
And for this, we, uh, we need an internal or spiritual source. The highest expression of love for others is through the engagement um, to love your enemy. And this is present in Quran, the Bible, and also Torah. All the great religious traditions agree on this point. For instance, Judaism says, love your enemy before helping your friend or uh, using hatred. In the Bible also, New Testament, fifth chapter, uh, 43 to 45th verse, love your enemy and pray for your persecutors in the name of, of, of your father who is in heaven. In Quran, chapter 41, verse 32, a good action is not the same as a bad one. And through good actions, some enemies can even become uh, friends. And also Mahatma Gandhi had similar principles. And he, he said, even though I um, despise evil wherever it is, you can only win by love. We can, you can only make your adversaries surrender by love, but not by hatred. Hatred is the highest form of violence. I am um, really in agreement with uh, Gandhi. It is important to love your enemy. And Reverend Martin Luther King has said, we never get rid of an enemy. We do not answer hatred by hatred. Nelson Mandela has said, in order to build peace with your enemy, you need to work with that enemy. This is also important so that it can become your associate, our associate. We need to We need to feel that we have the same origin, God. If we find that at the core of our being, being we can go forward. Through the Ambassadors for Peace initiative to encourage efforts from heart to heart, person to person, we can go over barriers and develop relationships of, of, of love and friendship. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ambassador Abu Bakr Sao. Thank you for bringing out those uh, very important points, the spirit of cooperation, the way to peace. And, uh, I think he has touched also on an important point that he has been recurring in this, this discussion, which is about healing. And uh, I think uh, every, all the, the speakers who have spoken so far have touched on this, this point, something that we all have to take away. And as I emphasize also on loving the enemy as the way to peace. If we love the enemy, then there's no enemy. Thank you very much for bringing up those points. Uh, we want to proceed with the next speaker. The next speaker is Rabbi Kevin DeCali. He is a, a theologian and a historian from Switzerland. Rabbi DeCali is a board member of the Council of the Theological Faculties Center for the Interreligious Studies and Interfaith Dialogue, and president of the Students' Body for Theological Studies at the University of Friedberg. 
as rabbi in the Orthodox Jewish community in Berlin. He is president of the Committee for the Maintenance of Jewish Culture, the Working Group for Christian Jewish Dialogue, and the Agovian Council for Interfaith Dialogue. Recently, he participated in the founding of the Swiss Council of Minority Religions with mainly Muslim, Hindu, and Sikh participation to give mutual support and a base for the legal recognition of these religious communities by the Swiss government. In the Swiss Army, he is a staff member of the military pastoral care uh, with the rank of first lieutenant. He is part of the competence center to integrate non-Christian religions in the Army's pastoral care. Uh, Rabbi Dikali, let us have your presentation, please. You're welcome. Well, thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> just as a side note, um, the last part uh, with the integration of non-Christian religions in the Swiss Army has been officially finished, and we are now having our first contact with the Muslim and uh, non-Christian communities to become part of this project. Very now, good. I'm very excited about that because it was right in the corona time that we finally managed to open this door. Well, in this past month, we all experienced firsthand how interdependent we really are. I depended on you to wash your hands, to not get me sick. You depended on me to do the same. The people in the hospitals depended on me and my company, for example, to do our service as we were engaged for about 100 days during the corona crisis in Switzerland in support of civil institutions. Washing our hands, keeping distance, wearing masks, they became universally held values. Here we see the question, how do we act towards other people in action? As the police in major communities, they were concerned with the rising numbers of violence at home. They were readying body bags. What a terrible thing. How could we live in a world and think it was normal to live in a situation? Okay, I'm sorry, there was a power down in the block and everything went black in suddenly. Um, I will try to make it very short. Now, my goal was to empower our soldiers to practice their religion in times of crisis and inspire and support each other, sharing their wisdoms and values. Since our budget was very stretched, we could not afford to provide special parts for festivities. So what I tried to do was to contact the cities, the cathedrals, uh, the big communities, and I said, listen, we have 100 soldiers here. They're working day and night, some of them in 12 and 14 hour shifts. They're away from home. Can you help us supporting them to enable them that they can at least have a celebration for the holiday? And the answer I received from all cities and the big churches was always the same. We have nothing to spare. We cannot celebrate in our communities either. You don't even have a priest. How do you want to celebrate? Um, stop, do not contact us anymore. Then I received the phone call from the imam of one of the local cities. He said, listen, I'm just talking to the rabbi of our city and we discussed your issue we would like to support um, the soldiers. And not only the Jewish and Muslim soldiers in your communities, when there's Pesach, when there's Iftar, we would like to sponsor a party for all the soldiers. I said, well, at least that. And when I heard that the Christian communities would not support us to celebrate Easter's, the small Jewish and Muslim communities collected money among their members and sponsored 300 spare ribs and two buckets full of chocolate eggs, even for the Christian soldiers, to have a celebration for Easter. On the other hand, we had situations where preachers starting to see COVID as the divine punishment. And each one knew exactly what sin we were punished for, just they couldn't agree on which one, which sin we were punished for. But they all agreed the soldiers who were doing service were a sign of the evil. Now, from the Jewish point of view, God spoke once, 3,000 years ago, to all the people on Mount Sinai. He didn't speak anymore for 3,000 years. There were 2,000 years filled with horrible, inhumane situations and circumstances with hardship 
and God never spoke to a group of people again. And just now he decided to punish us? No. That makes no sense. And there's another side to it. God makes poor people. He wants us to give them charity. God makes people hungry. He wants us to feed them. God makes people sick and puts them in danger. He wants us to heal them and to save them. God gets angry at people and tells us they deserve punishment. He wants us to argue in their defense. Now, what is our role in the relationship with God? When God says someone deserves punishment, he wants us to agree. Sure, if they're so bad, go and smite them. Now, that's really wrong. So even if the Torah says, for example, one sin deserves one kind of punishment, our job as religious leaders is to say, no, nobody deserves this kind of punishment. Like Abraham, the first monotheist, God tells him, up close and personal, the people of Sodom are evil. I am going to wipe them out. And Abraham was a person who really believed in God and trusted God. He should have said, sure, you're the boss. If they're so evil, do whatever you want. He did not do that. He argued with God several times, going down to, well, if there's at least 10 good people, save all the other ones for the sake of these people. 10 people. And when Moses saw that he could not defend the people of Israel when they made a golden calf in the desert, God said to him, I am going to get rid of these people. Moshe said to God, well, I cannot stop you, but if you get rid of them, you're going to have to get rid of me. This is how a good leader should respond. Even if we did deserve punishment, which, of course, we don't. Um, so to say that that's why a plague struck and synagogues and churches and mosques and our daily life has closed and was stopped, it is not possible for this to be a divine punishment. The opposite is true. God is saying loud and clear, I think you're acting like religion is a community activity. It is really not. It is a personal matter. Commandments, good behavior are between me and between you, one-on-one. -on -one. Stay at home and be a good person there. And somewhere this is more precious. Your mitzvah, your good deeds mean everything to me. And your behavior are what matters and not how many people are going to see it. So make your house a home, a place of worship for the living God. Let every house be a synagogue, a mosque, a gurudvara, a temple, a church. Live your life in support and in defense of others. Because there is this terrible, morbid misconception many of us are living by. That life is short and miserable and death is eternal. That the world has to get much worse before it gets better. And that as much as there is eternal reward, there can be eternal damnation. What a terrible belief. What a pointless thing even. And from this, many religious institutions derive their power because the trained professional claims to hold the key to eternity. What a nonsense. The opposite is what's true. That life is eternal and death is only temporary. That each and every immortal soul lives on and it only gets temporarily separated from the body. And we on earth, we are empowered to help God, the big connector, to contribute to better and a more caring world. So make your house a home, a holy place, where people will want to stay. And to conclude, as the teaching of Rabbi Yitzhak Walker went, when people cry, their waves reach heaven. Their wailing is heard by God. Too often people turn away. But whenever you see someone cry and say, God, I will not move away from those tears until you, the one, the only one, dries all the tears, thus you bring redemption to the world. Thank you very much. Okay, our next uh, topic will be 
the question and answer session. That is the next item on our program. So I think we, let's take that. Let's invite uh, Mr. Hena Hanshin to uh, present some questions, and we can have the other the other panelists answer those questions. Yes, good afternoon, good evening, uh, esteemed panelists. Greetings to all of you. Um, uh, it is my privilege now to address some questions from the audience to all of you. Actually, uh, we have lots of questions, but uh, we have to uh, uh, take a choice of maybe three questions for the moment um, that we want to address to all of you. and. Maybe each participant, uh, each uh, um, uh, speaker can uh, respond. The first question I got was a question actually from Africa. And it is the question, among religious leaders, um, uh, how is it possible, um, or what are the main obstacles for people of different faiths to come together and how these obstacles can be overcome. So I would like, without a further ado, just to spontaneously ask one of the speakers to respond to that question and maybe the others also, that each one can maybe present some feedback. So the question was, what are the main obstacles for people of different faiths to come together and how these obstacles can be overcome? Thank you. Okay, may I um, just give some words of wisdom? I yes, think that was, uh, yes, I think that was touched on um, by myself. And I think the, uh, one of our speakers, if I'm not, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Medi, if I'm not mistaken, um, we speak about mutual respect. I also gave the, the African term of Ubuntu. So it's all about, uh, uh, recognizing and respecting uh, each other and respecting each other's beliefs. I think as Mrs. Mendy mentioned that, uh, not thinking that one's belief, or one's religion is superior than the other. Uh, that's actually what also gave birth to, to racism, where others thought that their, their color, their culture, is, is far better than the other race, etc. So respect, mutual respect. We need to have an understanding and we have to, to have respect for other people's beliefs uh, as much as we want our beliefs as well to be respected and not to look down onto others. Thank you. Reverend George, can we continue our question and answer session shortly? Is that okay? Oh yes. Uh, yeah, but we have a short time now uh, because uh, because right. of that uh, power failure at uh, uh, the technical problem with the rabbi, uh, our time has been uh, yeah. Uh, Maybe a just, could it be possible to hear the answer of the only woman representative here in this? Yes, um, please. Yes, <laughs> le yes, yes. Let's 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 take her answer, please. Yes. Sorry. Um, so I think uh, there is more uh, that unites the religions and there's more common ground uh, in the re religion than, than uh, the divisions that can, come uh, that can become apparent uh, at times. And uh, I think uh, the, question, the answer uh, was spot on. The, the, the way forward that I see is today it is very important to meet people, uh, not Google people. And I think um, uh, that brings in uh, the importance of today's engagement, uh, the, um, uh, uh, of reaching out to different religious persuasions like UPF uh, has been doing, and for people to be understanding and studying uh, a religion. Uh, to, it's basically all religions or none, and to, to be able uh, you know, because uh, as they say that, um, you know, as uh, Gandhi once said that as many religions as people and we are all going to the same source. 
So to be united in humanity and to be able to reach out, and this is precisely the work that UPF is doing. And all I would like to do is that such work is the hope uh, for humanity and please keep on building and keep, uh, 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 and this, this kind of engagement and this kind of peace is what is required um, uh, in today's uh, time. And um, uh, again, when we, when we talk about peace, one thing, uh, that I would like to reiterate is that it is not easy uh, being a peacemaker. It is probably one of the most uh, difficult things to do. Uh, the money and all the worldly benefits are with conflicts. But it is um, when we talk about peacemakers and when we talk about peace in society, um, then one should remember um, that if you take down that Root, then that is where you would be with the spiritual ones, with the, uh, with the, uh, with the holy uh, people from Christianity, from the Jewish traditions, from any religious persuasion. The struggle for good has never been easy. The, uh, the path of truth and justice has very often been lonely. And I think the way forward is for the peace builders and the peacemakers never to give up and carry on regardless. Keep building bridges and do not compromise on the messages of truth and justice. That is all I would, I would like to say. Thank you. Thank you. Back to, to you, Reverend George. I think we're time-wise uh, just coming to the end. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Hanshim, uh, for taking the, the question and answer session. Uh, we would like to conclude this session, but I just want to ask each of the panelists to give us uh, their, their just one, one, their last word in this presentation. Uh, starting with uh, Prophet Radebe, if you have any last word to say to the participants, please do. Um, thank you, moderator. If I am the only person who is right in the world, if my religion or beliefs are the only ones that are correct in the world, then the creator should have only created me and me alone in the world. Let us all strive to be more spiritual than to be religious, and the world will become a better place. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, let's take... Uh... The next speaker, Mrs. Medi, please say a last word. Uh, I would like to say, uh, I would like to reiterate, um, I would like to thank uh, you, uh, UPF uh, for always uh, commemorating these events, um, um, uh, you know, where they invite all religions and none, and to uh, continue the good work and uh, uh, the peaceful engagement that they do. And I wish them many more such fruitful uh, sessions. And I would like to thank all the part participants uh, uh, for their for their time, and I hope uh, that this uh, that whatever little contribution we made was useful. Thank you. Thank you, Abubakar Sahib, please. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Gloria, je vous remercie beaucoup. Thank you very much. I thank you very much, and I thank the Universal Peace Federation for organizing this conference. And I encourage UPF and also other organizations who are the peacemakers to organize a very often interreligious dialogue, opportunities for inter interreligious dialogue. I thank everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. And let's have a last word from the rabbi, Rabbi De Kali, please. Thank you. We call God one, Echad. Echad begins with Aleph. It is a strange letter. The number of value of Aleph is one. The meaning of the word Aleph is a thousand. God combines the plurality in unity. We are the thousand and he is one. And at the same time, as we are dependent on him because all the thousands of us rely on the first one to have created 
the line that brought us forth the thousand, the actions of all the thousand are required to get back to the unity and to get back to one and to be at peace builders to remember that each and every action of each and every individual is important as all of humanity is united in God and is united in one. Thank you very much. And finally, we shall have a last word from Dr. Taj Hamad. I am inspired and encouraged to see such young people with such zeal and, and heart. Uh, I, I learned and I wanted to leave you with one thing. Uh, if we live our life in service to others, we will be closer to God. Uh, a best leader is a servant leader not the leader who tell people what to do, but he does it first. And let us walk in our path away from self-centeredness and walk with the heart of a parent for others and in the shoes of a servant. Serving others, caring for others, and loving others and seeing the need of others and try to fulfill that need. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Hamad, for your short words of inspiration. Uh, with this, we are coming to the end of this uh, fourth session of the ILC 2020. Uh, the expected outcome of this session on the spirit of cooperation, the way towards peace by the Interreligious Association for Peace and Development is a consensus by the speakers representing the various religious traditions and the essential traits for achieving peace in a world of plural cultures. And uh, uh, each of the participants have brought up very, very essential points and key words such as healing uh, has been presented here. Someone has spoken about the need for religious, religious leaders to take the, the position of spiritual healers, of being ones that will advocate on behalf of all, the, all, all of us who are guilty of one thing or the other and deserve punishment. And if uh, we deserve punishment, someone can say, oh God, instead of punishing these people, you may punish me. And uh, even the idea of loving our enemies, these are very essential points. Loving our enemies means that we have no enemy. So I hope that these points are points that uh, we can internalize. And uh, as uh, IAPD members, all the participants who are participating in this, se in this session, I hope that we can engage ourselves in further discussions. Um, I'm also very, uh, very happy to announce that uh, one of our uh, panelists here in the person of uh, Prophet uh, Radebe has been appointed as the chairman of the Interreligious Association for Peace and Development in Africa. And uh, being a dynamic leader, I'm sure that uh, under his leadership, we will uh, work together to organize more discussions like this and uh, more activities that will uh, bring uh, practical pro programs and activities to drive the points that we have been discussing here at home to all, all our people. Once again, thank you very much for your participants, all the distinguished uh, panelists. Thank you for coming, and uh, we thank the UPF uh, Secretariat uh, under the leadership of uh, uh, Dr. Thomas Walsh for uh, organizing this, this uh, conference. Thank you. Tomorrow's session, uh, September 12th, uh, is on the... Okay, tomorrow's, tomorrow's session, uh, which will start, will start 
at, 11, at, at 9 a.m. GMT is a session on the first 15 years of UPF, uh, contributing UPF's contribution to building a world of peace. So this will be the historical aspect and uh, dealing with UPF's contribution in the last 15 years as we celebrate uh, tomorrow the 15th anniversary of UPF. Once again, thank you very much for coming. We bring, the, we bring this session to a close here. God bless you all. Thank you.